Thank you. Um, colleagues, this is a, th a third district item technically, although I certainly think it's an all-district item. Um, but, but I would be remiss probably if I didn't say anything. Um, I've sat here over the course of, I don't know, so many years where the question of the Fullerton shelter came to us and uh, it did not come to fruition and the Santa Ana question came to us and that did not come to fruition. <clears throat> and so however this matriculated and materialized into to 1000 North Kramer, um, when, when I was approached about whether or not I would be, you know, what, what role, if any, would I want to play if <clears throat> 1000 North Kramer was at least looked at as uh, to be studied I thought it was really important to make clear that I didn't think that this county should make any more investment in looking for a homeless shelter unless we could get community support and political support in those jurisdictions. I mean, I think a lot of us were pretty angry after Santa Ana. Um, it felt like we had agreements and understandings with Santa Ana and then Santa Ana turned their back on us when it got hot in the kitchen. So I, I did put out basically a, a statement privately to um, the local cities and the electeds who testified today, you know, I think heard it loud and clear and said, look, if you're not going to go to your councils and pass resolutions on your public agenda and take a public stand on the record, I, I needed that. That was an insurance policy that we wouldn't be sitting here today and find ourselves in a position where the council whether Fullerton or in Santa Ana turned its back on this Board of Supervisors, right? So the other thing was commitment, financial commitment. And city stepped up, or has stepped up 100,000, um, uh, Anaheim stepped up 500,000, Fullerton stepped up. And so when those pieces came together, I was like, wow, this is really significant. <clears throat> because the community, at least some sec segments of the community seemed like they were all in. And you'll notice that that resolve hasn't changed throughout this analysis, right? The city councils didn't take an about face and they didn't renege on the financial pledges. But then we had a serious problem and that was the business community. Um, and there are many who testify today who are adamantly against this project. We had a forum in Fullerton we had a forum in uh, Anaheim uh, at one of the large churches. We had a smaller business roundtable at another church. <clears throat> and then last Friday, I met with Mr. Greek, uh, who's a property manager, and Mr. McCullough, the counsel from Alvarado Smith. And so I, at every turn, th this board, supervisors directly, their staff, we've gone to these forums, we've met with the community, we've taken testimony. <clears throat> but man, there's some big things in the room, and they ha they need to be acknowledged because this is this is the business that we're in. So you have people in large stead who've come out and been very supportive of this project. A lot of people from other parts of the county, not directly affected in this geographic location. Then, as a supervisor, right? This is the area I represent. I'm elected, and you heard threats today from the podium. You better not do this or else there will be political consequences. So most of you in here have never held office. Um, most of you read about everybody else's opinion about how we should be and how we should act, right? Everybody's got an opinion about us. And everybody gets to judge us, but then people get to stand there because we have a First Amendment, and it's their right, to threaten us with decision-making. So this weekend, I don't know if you saw it on 60 Minutes, Paul Ryan was interviewed on 60 Minutes. And <clears throat> he's the new speaker, right, of the House. And I watch it with my own family. Um, and he said something very, very interesting. He said, you know, if I start making decisions as a public policymaker that only take into consideration my next election or my ability to stay in office, <clears throat> then I'm really doing a great disservice to the people. As I repeat that, what, what uh, Speaker Ryan said, that, that is this heavy stuff because everybody up here 
loves what we do. I mean, we are really dedicated public servants, my colleagues and I. And we come to work and we work really hard. So the thought that you could take a vote or do an action that could result in a threat to your ability to stay here, for most politicians, is the only thing they think about when they make decisions. Right? I mean, a lot of electeds just vote for their own self-preservation. So <clears throat> this morning I got a text from somebody, a really good person, who said that he, had, he was praying for me today. And that was really awesome. <clears throat> Because when you, when you sit in these chairs, um, actually the Bible talks about the community is supposed to pray for your leaders. And you do need guidance. You do need something bigger than yourself in times like this. I mean, for a lot of people, maybe my colleagues up here or others, this is simple, right? It's not that heavy or an emotional decision. This is a very difficult decision for me because I know what's right, the right thing to do, but I also know what the consequences could be for me for this vote. See, so when, when uh, Speaker Ryan made that comment on 60 Minutes, especially the timing of it, because I knew this was coming today, I was like, I would love to inscribe that in the oath of office for every elected official who ever gets sworn in, in any office in America, right? You, we all take our oaths. And we should add a line that says, and I will always vote irrespective of what the consequences might be for my office. So the, the, the fortunate thing for me is I've been elected in this county for two and a half decades, so, um, it, it, you know, it is what it is. But for a lot of people, they don't have the base to be able to make tough votes. And so they don't do the right thing. So for me, honestly, the right thing, irrespective of the consequences, is something way bigger, way bigger than um, any one individual elected. And, and, it, and people said it a lot today, but I, I do feel it's worth repeating. And that's that's our own humanity about man. We, you know, 130 or 40 people, I mean, lost their lives in Paris the other day. September 11, 3,000 people died. And all over the world, there's people that want to hurt other people. And yet, when you walk outside here, and all of you saw it when you came here today, the way we're treating our own humanity is shameful. It's, it's, it's hurtful. You know, I mean, I am so pleased by the um, non-secular community, especially the diocese, because I think the Pope's visit and his commitment and reaffirmation of helping the homeless was really huge. It, the timing of it was significant, especially for this issue. And... So, I don't know, to me that I've always known what the right decision is, but I've been so torn because I, I don't want to hurt the local business community. Does that make sense? Like, I, I, I know what the right decision is, it's easy. It's to support this. It's going to be the catalyst for the ability to deal with homeless all over our county. If we do it here and we do it right, and we dispel all the myths, we can do this and we can solve the homeless problem in our county. If we don't do it right and we don't invest the resources, we will not build another homeless shelter anywhere in this county. So <clears throat> I apologize for being so introspective, but when you, when you, there are certain votes in your political career that people will hold up and always point to. They'll either say you're an awesome elected official and you did the right thing, or they will forever excoriate you because they felt that you did something so deeply offensive. 
And this to me, like it or not, from my own personal perspective, is one of those votes. This is just one of those votes that you have to cast irrespective of the consequences because it matters for our humanity. So I'll call on you in a second, but just for purposes, I'd like to move the recommended actions two through eight. And Supervisor Nelson, I'd appreciate a second because you've been such an important role model in this area. Second that. All right, so you're next. 